Welcome to Buddha the Gas Pump. My name is Rick Archer, and today I'm with Canella Michelle Myers, whom I've interviewed before, a couple years ago. Um, if you're new to this, uh, Buddha the Gas Pump is an ongoing series of interviews with spiritually awakening people. Um, there are over 300 of them now on batgap.com, so go there and check out the past interviews menu. Um, <clears throat> I've been receiving emails and Facebook messages from people in the last week or two of asking what happened, are you okay, where, are, where have you been, because we took a little vacation. <laughs> um, and I'm now going to be doing a series of interviews uh, up here in the Vancouver area. I'm at Canela's house on Bowen Island, a very beautiful place, looking out over the water, although you can't see it in this video. It's, it's good for me to be here. I love doing interviews in person. I do them all in person rather than Skype if I could, because mm. uh, it's just much nicer to just sit with the person. It's also really nice to uh, support you with all the support that you do for people in interviewing people. Um, I think it's, it's very valuable for me and my heart just to yeah. support what you do. Well, thanks. If anybody else feels that way, there's a donate button <laughs> <laughs> on batgap.com, which uh, <laughs> we do appreciate that support and, and enables me to be as involved in it as I am. <clears throat> um, so, I think uh, one of my fundamental assumptions and observations is that um, growth, spiritual evolution is an, uh, a continuum and there's no end to it that I can see. Uh, and so I'm always curious if, if I've spoken to someone before, and it's been a couple of years, uh, how they feel they might have grown since we last spoke. Um, what do you think? Well, that's, a, that's great. <laughs> no warning on that. <laughs> uh, always growing. Always growing. And I would say, since we did the last uh, um, interview, probably the main aspect that I feel that I've learned the most and um, sort of spilled into the unknowing aspect of life is in my relationship with my husband. Mm -hmm. um, in... Uh, what apparently looked like very patriarchal fellow um, and uh, that that being harder for me um, in the learning mostly uh, about innocence that um, however he might be he, he doesn't know what he doesn't know and it was never anything that was meant to hurt me or it was just because I'm sensitive mm -hmm. um, a little bit rough at times and uh, at first that was rougher on me and then uh, it got softer and softer as I saw that it wasn't how he wasn't meaning to treat me any particular way mm -hmm. it was how he was with himself mm -hmm. and uh, seemingly listening more to the logic of, of life um, than to the feminine aspect, mm -hmm. which I feel is what the patriarch, uh, it's just out of harmony, it's not a, it's just how most of the world is um, listening. Yeah, when you say most of the world, I mean the thought that I've been having as you've been saying that is that we could probably say these things about everybody in the world, because none of us mm -hmm. know what we don't know. And, uh, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. No, that's that's the innocence, right? Yeah. Is it? Is it? And that, I mean, it's been said by sages, of course. Right. Over time, that ignorance is the main culprit. Right. Remember what Christ said: "Forgive them, Father; they know not what they do." That's right. And there are degrees of that. Well, but there's also the reality of being a human being and really living that, rather than just saying the word, actually, really. I don't know what's feeling the actual real innocence so that no matter what the person does even if it feels like a, a slam of the door in your face or something mm -hmm. like that that it it, it 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 just isn't that anymore because you can see that they're not doing that in any intentional way and now and I that I'm, I'm also aware that that sounds I think worse than it actually is it's just that I'm very sensitive yeah so 
I mean, in, in, in a relationship, it might look like not being heard or not being seen or not being included. Mm -hmm. um, and all of these aspects were more about how he wasn't hearing uh, his own feminine and would go yeah. to more the logical root of um, what, what he was more used to listening to, which is what the patriarch is. It's yeah. not listening to their own nature as much as how we've been uh, trained to listen and respond or react to in the world. And so you're kind of alluding to his blind spots. Well, how about your blind spots? Because I ask, actually asked you about your growth. Right. My so. growth has been the blind spot that I took it personally. Uh -huh. Or that he was supposed to be any particular way other than he is. Right. And so for me, my side in it was not really being so into his side about it, mm -hmm. or whatever it was he was doing or trying to change that. Instead, it was learning where I was not um, being fully receptive yeah. and, uh, and understanding. Boy, I think there's a, there's a key thing here which I think is really important, which is that people are who they are, you know, and mm -hmm. there's so, sort of an art to learning to just accept and appreciate people as they are and not want to change them into exactly. something that they're not, which is a hopeless endeavor. Exactly. And the, and the funny part is, yeah. is that once, once I didn't really want him to change, he changed. Interesting. It, it's almost like he was willing to be those aspects until I could accept um, myself in the scenario mm -hmm. um, and see the innocence of it. Mm. Um, and then whatever that was, it seemed to um, melt away and, and certainly we have a, a completely different relating now. Mm. So I'm the, I don't consider myself at all to be um, psychologically adept in, in, in terms of understanding psychology and relationships and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, I couldn't write books like John Gray writes, for instance, about, you know, relationships and human interaction and, and so on. Um, but um, the one angle of this show that's a little unique and perhaps distinguishes it from 10,000 books on how to be a better person and mm -hmm. you know interpersonal relationships and all that is that we're trying to tie in the the dimension of you know being awake to one's true nature you know or, or being awake to pure consciousness or the ground state of the yes. universe or whatever we want to call it and the significance of that for all other aspects of life right um, so I mean there are probably so many different <clears throat> books and seminars and whatnot that deal with relationship issues that don't even touch on that um, and I would suggest that perhaps um, there's a, an advantage to being able to touch on that being being open to the dimension of the self or pure yes. consciousness gives you a, an advantage in being able to work out issues that everybody has to deal with. Well, the, 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 the difference is, is that um, there's acceptance of what is, or there's acceptance of what is. And I can only be honest with myself if that wasn't full and rich and, and satisfied. Uh -huh. uh, and so wherever it feels that there's, there's some sort of, uh, where it l appears like it's not okay, that would be my indicator, mm. something's up. And, and uh, so that's, you know, even though that sounds really personal um, in my acceptance of, sort of my acceptance of the patriarch itself, mm -hmm. where I had been more resistant to that, or I had categorized it somewhat until it too is also equal. And in that learning, I mean, it's, it's so wonderful because I can see that, that all of it's innocent and across the world. Um, and, and the difficulty is that, I think I, I mentioned that, is the, that um, people, men and women, are listening more to the masculine side of themselves hmm. predominantly over the feminine aspects of themselves. So I don't see it as a, as a, as a men-woman thing at all. I see it as a self-invitation uh, for harmony. And um, as each appearance of self, like your, yourself or, mm -hmm. or myself, we're this blend of the masculine, the yin and the yang, um, 
and and how do we bring harmony to that and as we bring harmony to ourselves which is the gift of having been in a patriarchal relationship and seeing the innocence really was an acceptance of my own masculine inside myself hmm. and of course then wanting to support people to that because so on the inside so on the outside so are you saying that in the world in general there seems to be a, a I mean, people talk about the awakening of the divine feminine mm -hmm. in the world. Yeah. And so the implication is that the, the, the masculine has been way out of proportion to the feminine. Mm -hmm. And that now somehow there's an awakening in, in world consciousness taking place. People are having spiritual awakenings and all. And this uh, is bringing with it a, a greater awakening of the divine feminine. Is well, it, are you kind of saying that? Well, I, I, that still sounds so much... What I would say it is, is it's, it's more of a balanced listening to both aspects of self. Because mm -hmm. if it, it goes more to the feminine, then, then that, that's not it either. Right. It's more of a balance. It's just been sort of almost a, a habitual way, a collective way of the mind to uh, pick the more the masculine aspect and that's what everybody's supposed in to do. In society in general that's happening. That's in, been happening. In, in the collective mind. Right. In, in what appears here. Yeah. In, uh, yeah. So if there's a spiritual awakening happening in the world as many people feel there is, um, how does that relate to uh, a greater balance between the, the masculine and the feminine? How, how is it helping to facilitate or bring about a greater balance? Well, in, in the choice points. What appears here as a choice point, so, so we need to talk about choice then, okay. whether there is choice or there isn't choice. Mm -hmm. And uh, ultimately there is no choice, but yet in the moment uh, there can be an apparent choice, just like there's an apparent you or an apparent me. Self yeah. shows up here as this mm -hmm. man, Rick. And earlier I, uh, you asked about something to drink. Mm -hmm. Would you like juice? Would you like water. Mm -hmm. um, and so in that moment, it appears that consciousness is taking, making a choice. Yeah. Um, and you do, you pick juice. Yeah. Right? So th this kind of choice point. So in the moment, um, when a person is about to make a choice, and it might be, say, in the corporation, um, of whether or not to, um, I mean, the Volkswagen thing that's going on right now. Is, is she such has a Volkswagen. <laughs> a diesel. A diesel. If you follow the news. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, somebody at some point decided to go for the bottom line of the money yeah. uh, rather than probably what might have also been present in that moment was where they felt that maybe that wasn't quite the right. Yeah. Right? So, so they made an unethical choice, uh, from, uh, took a shortcut and that's for what, money. That's what the outcome came to be. But in that actual moment, what they did is they overrode what might be there in the feeling of what feels right. Yeah. And so that's what I feel Jesus meant about righteousness. It's not about rules and regulations like a religion would say. It's about uh, what's the right way of the felt sense of being who you are in the moment mm. and, and leaning left or leaning right. It's very much just the moment and making decisions based on where you are right then, inclusive um, of the masculine and the feminine aspect of what your heart feels and what's practical. So that's an interesting point. Um, as I look back on my own life over the decades, there's, you know, it, I mean, there's that cartoon of the little angel and devil on on person's <laughs> shoulders. You know, um, there's there's a kind of a still a small voice within that that you know to be right, even though everybody around you might be saying, no, that's crazy, you know, that's wrong. Um, and it takes discernment, I think, to recognize that voice because one can easily mistake something that actually is wrong for and, and interpret it as this is my intuition, this is what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. So I guess a, to extract a question from this, and perhaps this still relates to the feminine thing, cause yes, because and femininity is associated with intuition. The reception of what is. Yeah. Right? The, 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 the feminine aspect, it receives the information, and the masculine aspect uh, takes action on, on that information. Yeah. Or appears to. I mean, that's the, that's the dance. And there's that phrase, woman's intuition. 
you know. Yes, yes. Uh, popular phrase. So. So it, yeah, if anything, I think that's the divine feminine awakening is basically giving more space to actually hear that voice that does know in the mm -hmm. moment and actually respond to that voice rather than overriding it with, like you say... Well, possibly with the intellect or... Oh yeah, or everybody's going to disagree with me so I better just do what they want me to do. Yeah. Or what so, you think um, they want you to do. So, so what you kind of have said then so far in this interview is that over the past couple of years since we spoke there's been a, a kind of a, a, maybe you've said this, there's been a, a greater enlivenment of, of a, or a greater attunement to that intuitive voice, a, a trusting of it, a surrender to it, uh, and thereby, or therefore, an acceptance of people as they are. Well, uh, Does also, that relate to what you're saying about your husband? Yes. Yeah. Uh, in a way, it's, it's almost um, because the relating was pretty good prior to this particular relationship. Mm -hmm. I <clears throat> I just hadn't been with somebody who was more uh, patriarchally orientated. Mm -hmm. uh, so this school <clears throat> of life, this relating, um, has basically, yeah, exposed this aspect of consciousness um, directly in my own direct experience, mm -hmm. um, as well as over time uh, what's been here. So it's a conglomeration of, of, of the revealings and, and learning uh, in each moment of how how it all works, you know. Yeah. So um, perhaps based on your own experience, can you um, can we ex kind of extract a uh, general prescription that could enable people to be more attuned to that intuitive voice and uh, you know learn to align their behavior with it more clearly? Well, often it's the part that feels vulnerable. Like you say, uh, you almost like consciousness will bring you up to the edge of, of the scenario you spoke of earlier, uh, where everybody else seems to be going in another direction, mm. and yet your inner voice says, no. <laughs> and a lot of people will choose, oh, I'll go with them, yeah. to follow along, instead of be more closely with this um, hearing uh, and so there's a slowing down mm. meditation of course yeah <clears throat> um, and a getting to know the humanness that rises here as you yeah right because it's so completely unique nobody else is here to learn you they're they're here experiencing consciousness is experiencing its life as this human being mm. and and in that consciousness is is uh, looking to become more conscious and more aware of its own self, the play that's here. Mm -hmm. So, um, an interest in that, of course, is is uh, the root. Yeah, because you know a, a lot of people are, are makes still you more interdirected, and and if you're more interdirected, then you're you're more sensitive to that inner voice. Whereas if the attention is always sort of outward, 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 you, you can kind of ignore the inner thing because you're always focused. Outward. Well, in fact, uh, when you're inward, it, whatever inward, outward, you know, there's no inward or outward. Yeah. But when you're resting with where you are in each moment, mm -hmm. um, the outside is included. Yeah. So the deeper you hear from where you actually are with all the information coming in, and you're no longer going out to anything. Mm -hmm. Everything's coming in, coming in, but there's no in or out. It's just the appearances. But as that gets more and more seated and, and more and more time is spent with exactly where you are, so you're in the bank, instead of having your attention out, how long is the lineup and what time is it and all that kind of stuff, it's like feeling right where you are, um, inclusive. It, you won't cut out all the outside details by being present to... Um, the inner experience as well. Yeah. So it's that balance between the outer and the inner. And there's also something here which I think you kind of mentioned, which is an acceptance of things as they are, which is very Byron Katie-ish. But if you're in the bank <laughs> and there's a long line, um, you know, you're not going to speed up the line by fretting and fuming about it. And so it's kind of an opportunity to tune in and just sort of Right. You well, know. to even get a kick out of consciousness fretting and yeah. fuming, <laughs> you know, because yeah. if you admit that, then you it could, becomes fairly... You can do that, but you can also say, all right, well, 
this is the way it is. There's this line, and uh, I'm, I'm and here I am. So you know, make use of the time. Read yeah. a read a you know a pamphlet or listen to my eye thing or or feel or your breath just, or just feel my <laughs> breath and you know think my mantra or whatever people do. You know? yeah. Well, I would I recommend actually experiencing where you are mm -hmm. rather than listening to your iPad or yeah. you know uh, it might be in a moment, but but feeling your feet in your shoes, mm. feeling that there's clothes on your body, uh, your heart, letting your awareness rest with where your heart is. Um, and also the incredible amount of information that's already there, um, the colors of the skin, you know, how light reflects off of skin, mm -hmm. um, the movements that are around you, the, the way the sounds echo, um, whatever's really real in that moment. And the more that there's this listening to what is real in the moment, um, the stronger that listening gets. Yeah, and the more you are with where you are, uh, just in its incredible ordinariness, mm. um, and that's why people don't listen to it because it seems so ordinary and plain. It's not nearly so dramatic as having a problem of mm. um, fretting. And, you know, there's a dilemma of some kind, and then we get to share with somebody else. Oh, I had such a long lineup in the bank, and oh, right. you know, I had troubles and blah blah blah. Yeah. <laughs> Quite different than saying. Oh, I saw I saw this person and man I could just see the light in their eyes and the way that the light reflected off their skin and oh isn't it amazing to be alive? Yeah, that's a, you said an interesting thing just now. Several interesting things, but the thing about the more you you know tune into that, the stronger it gets. And uh, that's such a good principle. I mean, it's so there's so many obvious examples of that on, in, a, in the mundane sense, you know, the more you do push-ups, the better you get at push-ups, or, you know, the more you play tennis, the better you get at tennis, but the, the more you tune into that still quiet, still quiet voice, and that intuitive impulse, the more clearly you're, you'll be perceiving it, you know, and the more easily and spontaneously your behavior will align with it. Well, interesting point. Awareness is here, right? Yeah. It's all, and we've heard this in many of the interviews, uh, it's already here. You don't need to wake up and all that, unless you do, right? Because if there's a, a awareness or consciousness wants to wake up, it, you're helpless to that. I mean, relax open to seeking, um, if that's what's true. I mean, I love the aspect of my life when I knew what I was looking for without knowing what I was looking for, just that I was looking mm -hmm. to awaken that I could feel that there was a truth in this and I loved it. It was, it was very short and I missed it when it was gone. <laughs> I really did yeah. because there was such a juicy, alive direction in it um, that disappeared, of course, when it found itself. It did, but it's sort of like the seeking ended but the exploration never ceases, you know, the discovery, mm -hmm. the, the refinement, the unfold. It just takes on a different flavor, right? Totally. And the you know, like a twig in the hurricane happens uh, differently than before when I was just sort of felt like I was being picked up and brought different places. Yeah. I still feel that a lot, but it's much more peaceful and full and sort of... Um, content. Content. It's thicker, mm -hmm. if you will. Um, mm -hmm. And it feels like it does. It feels like the whole world's moving with me. So the movements are sort of thicker in that way. Yeah. Um, and I guess it's because awareness knows itself more. Yeah. I know from my own experience, there were so many years of, uh, for me it took longer than, than you, I'm sure, but so many years of this sort of desperate, yearning, miserable, I, you know, I can't even <laughs> stand it and I got to get there kind of thing. Do and you miss it? <laughs> no. Um, and now it's more like there's this baseline of contentment and isn't this fun? You know, it's like, whoa, you know, life is so enjoyable and it's so interesting. And, and you know, I, I could readily acknowledge that I'm still a beginner in terms of the whole vast span of possibilities. Uh, but that's great, you know, because it means all that much more fun <laughs> and exploration and discovery and adventure. And, you know, the whole thing is just a fascinating ride. It just has lost the, um, the sort of unpleasant Tone, uh, flavor it had when there wasn't that contentment there. 
Well, wouldn't you say that it's more that you're not resisting the unpleasantness? That too, but there isn't very much unpleasantness. You no. know, I mean, it's like uh, there's a lot of bliss and a lot of fulfillment, and, mm -hmm. um, and, I, and again, there's a. It's like one man's bliss is another man's misery. The, if, if either of us were to somehow snap back to where we were 20 or 30 years ago, it'd be like, ah, okay. I'm going to die. This is horrible. <laughs> Even though then we might have felt pretty okay. You yeah. know? And by the same token, perhaps if we were to snap to where we're going to be 10 years from now, it would be like we wouldn't be able to continue this conversation because we'd be so blissful. We'd have to just sort of well, I don't know. sit here I don't and know. marinate in it for a while. I don't know. I, I, I... It seems like, and I don't know that it will end, it feels like it's pretty much a sure thing that love will continue to embrace itself more deeply and yeah. more deeply and more deeply. Um, Ad infinitum. Yeah, yeah, and that that's, that's, the, that's the play here. Well, that's kind of what I mean. It's like, yeah. but creatures acclimate. You know, every, every creature acclimates. Truly. To, I think he, and it's a, it's, I always saw it as a kind of a God's mercy that we acclimate. You know, uh, that if because if we didn't, life would be so intolerable. You know, but we're kind of, we acclimate to whatever our situation, but there's always this evolutionary impulse to progress, to evolve. Right. And as we do so, we acclimate to that, and we acclimate to that, and we acclimate right. to that, we, and we just keep going. So and I'm I, speaking very I, hypothetically about snapping back 30 well, years or snapping forward right, 10 yeah, years. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, I guess... I guess the part that I responded to mm -hmm. uh, was the idea that it will look better uh, in some future, that we'd be even more blissed. And I imagine that, yeah, we'll know ourselves even more. Yeah. Or consciousness will know itself even more, really. To well, I'm not such an in the now fanatic that I can't speak that way. You know, it's like, sure, it'll always be the now <laughs> and all that. but. Um, based upon my experience over the last f almost 50 years of being focused on spiritual stuff, yeah. uh, I can, you know, if, the, if, if life continues as it always has, I can honestly say that it's probably going to look better in 10 years. I mean, I'll be almost 76, so maybe I'll be starting to feel old physically, but in terms of the, the inner experience and, you know, the consciousness, the, orient, the, the, per the perception, the orientation from awareness, or however I want to describe it, my experience has been that that has maybe fluctuated but always steadily uh, improved over years and years. Yes. Does that jive with your experience? Yes. Well, yeah. yes. Okay, yeah. Basically, it becomes more flowing and uh -huh. uh, yet the... Um, yeah. there's, there's a lot more that's seen about what isn't in harmony. Mm -hmm. And so, as much as there's also the direct expression of love, there's also a scene um, of the um, less nice aspects of, of what's happening. And, in uh, you, in the world, in, in, in anything, in, huh? in, in the world, in the way that things are, you know? Okay. Like, give me an example. Well, it's, it's, it's also in our media, it's, it's how everything's evolving, that um, there's so much more that we know, there's way more rape happening than we used to, because now we know about it. We know it. about it. We know about it. There sure. might have been a lot more, but it appears like things are getting more rough. Yeah. Um, that right. With ISIS and all that, that things are quickening, yeah. Yeah. not only in the aspect of the people moving more towards love, but also in people moving uh, towards fear. I think you got something there. I mean, we could say, well, at least we're not in the middle of World War II or, you know, the purge in, in, under Stalin or, you know, some of these, the, or the Holocaust or some of these horrible things that have happened. But, um, I, but I have heard many people say that there's a sort of a, a magnification of both positive and negative forces in the world. The polarities are Getting amplifying. more and more strongly defined. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe the sheep and the goats are being separated, or the wheat from the chaff. <laughs> well, well, to me, so looking at that, right, so then when you said, is it getting better? So I, I'm saying that, yes, in a way, my personal experience maybe mm -hmm. is better, but also um, what I recognize as being 
some pretty rough stuff um, and, and what people are experiencing. Um, mm. Because people are getting more sensitive with the evolution, they're also experiencing the rough stuff a little more acutely. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, the, it could be that to a certain extent uh, the chickens are coming home to roost. I mean, we're, we've been doing so many things that yeah. are unsustainable. Exactly. And, uh, and so what can we do about that? Right now, that's what I'd like to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> if that's... Uh, yeah. What would, do you have something you'd like to say? You want me to I ask you a question about that? Yeah, yeah. What would, what would I suggest? Is that what you're asking me? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Um, and, we, and we can tie it to specific examples. I mean, you, beautiful. Yes. You know. Yes. And so, can I ask you? Do you have an example of something that's happening in the world these days that you've heard of lately that that honestly is disturbing to you? Yeah, I could think of many examples. Like but, what? Uh, but like, for instance, I'm very keenly interested in the whole climate change phenomenon, and. Uh, and you have you know half of the Congress denying that it, in the U.S. Congress denying that it even exists that there is a problem, mm -hmm. and those who grudgingly acknowledge that there's a problem are saying it's well, but it's not man-made; it's sunspots or something. And yet, I, I, you know, some even some very somewhat conservative by somewhat conservative estimates, you know, we could get a, a four or five, six degree uh, rise in in temperature over the next century, and if it's six. It probably means no more human beings on the planet, um, and f going from here to that, if that mm -hmm. were to come to pass, is not going to be a picnic. You know, there's going to be if this migration of the Syrians right now uh, is going to just yep. seem like a, pic a picnic in a positive sense compared to the mass migrations of billions of people if the if the oceans rise several meters or several feet. Right, right. And, and so the, what happens, because you say this is yeah. this is an issue that is disturbing to you. Yeah, I could go on for another 10 so minutes. So <laughs> where is the disturbance in your body, energetically, as um, you look at climate change and the political action around that? I don't know that, well, maybe I'm blind to it, but I don't know that there is a disturbance in my body, but maybe there is. I mean, if if my body is really cosmic and contains the universe, mm -hmm. as some people say they experience, then if there's a disturbance in nature, there must be a disturbance in my body. Exactly. Yeah. So, so this is so. And if I'm you're not disturbed, so, so, and well, that's why I asked you to choose something that's disturbing okay. to you. Yeah. What 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 do you feel disturbed by that you'd want to move away from it? Um, not sure that I want to move away from it, but I sort of want to do what I can to avert it. Mm -hmm. There's a verse in, the, in the Yoga yeah. Sutras which says uh, it's Heyam Dukkha Managatam, which means avert the danger which has not yet come. Okay. And I feel that a great danger is coming, and I think we have to uh, bring about a shift in world consciousness so that people are more awake to what's right. going on and, and, and less delusional. Is, see, the only thing with that... I'm doing what I can to serve that. Right, right. So. What I was looking for was the aversion part, mm -hmm. the actual, what part of your, if you watch the news, what do you shake your head at and feel disturbed by? Well, you know, the funny thing is, uh, I, if anything, I'm sometimes disturbed by my lack of disturbance. What, when, uh, <laughs> well, when you say that. When 9-11 happened, for instance, yes. and I sat there and watched the towers fall, it was more like, fascination that it was than it was disturbance I thought I'll be done you know this is major and mm. this is going to have incredible ramifications and uh, I and I was just sort of like astounded in a way but not <laughs> disturbed and you know some people so in other words you don't have anything that disturbs you uh, well, if my wife yells at me or something, that disturbs me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I mean by my relationship with my husband, yeah. right? That's exactly it. It's like, can I, if I can really say that I'm accepting uh, that in your personal relationships, that's, right, uh -huh. the place that, that is going to still have some bits because it's where you're most at home. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, when, so I, imagine, when I watch stuff happening in the world, and I, I like to watch the news and keep abreast of, of current okay, events can you and all. Can you remember anything that was disturbing that you saw in the news? Yeah, tons of stuff. I mean, when you see you need one, that one, guy who shot the lion in Africa, and you, and okay. you realize, multiply that times thousands of times, because okay, like 30,000 elephants yeah. have been slaughtered so in the last year. So where inside is disturbed by this guy shooting out the lion? If you look right now. If you can sincerely say that that bothers you, where is the energy that's bothered? 
I don't mean to be uncooperative. Yeah, I know. Um, I know. I'm wondering if this is like, you know. if this is the right angle to go in. Well, just with, with when you're, you know. Yeah, it's it's kind of like everything that potentially could disturb me, uh, for me, is a call to action. Is an impetus to. Right, but infuse more of what I consider to be the solution into the world, right, rather than bemoan where are you the situation. From, right. Uh, where am I coming from? Right. Because if you're not feeling the disturbance, then you're, you're bouncing off of it to make a change, try to change something. Yeah. I mean, so, let's say that you're so a lifeguard you're, and it, somebody's drowning. Right. Uh, it's like you don't feel disturbed that somebody's drowning. You spring into action. You run to the right. water. That's you responding. get out there. You, you do the something. Response, to, yeah. 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 So what I'm looking for <laughs> is we need to have a disturbance so we can show how to be with the disturbance. <laughs> Yeah, but, it, but we don't need to be disturbed in order to help. Well, or in order if, to the thing contribute. is, is that most people, what happens is they get disturbed and they react with the same energy that caused the disturbance in the first place. I don't like this, I want to change it. And if they're not sitting with, so this is where I'm saying, this is where we can actually be with the energy mm -hmm. uh, that gets disturbed uh, rather than acting on top of that. Yeah. As a as a reaction, so you're you're talking about responding, uh -huh. which is, uh, I I'm not sure, right? Because I'm not, I, I'm not you. I can't. That's why I was looking for a disturbance. Yeah, I'll try to find something one. that. So so it's like um, an example would be, um, okay, uh, wow, there's so many different things, but the whole thing is. Well, it's something to take something from your own experience then. Uh, we were kind of talking about global affairs. I mean, it doesn't have to be global, but... Um, I think we're just going to need to talk about it because the thing is, I, I know from myself, uh -huh. when I get disturbed yeah. uh, by something, if I see it on, on TV where something touches me, uh, then I know to open to what I'm feeling rather than get on a bandwagon. Yeah. So can you remember something that you saw on TV that disturbed you? Well... Um, Some incident. Or, I know my wife gets disturbed when Donald Trump comes on. She won't even let me watch him. <laughs> 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 this is interesting. I want to watch the Republican debate. <laughs> no, we're not going to. We're not going to spend the next year and a half watching that. <laughs> okay. Well, I think what it is. I think we're just talk about it. I guess because I, uh -huh. I'm sort of in the same boat of having learned how to respond rather than react. Yeah. And so. What often happens is people see the news and they, they have some sort of feeling of complaint. Yeah, they throw shoes at the television. Or they, they <laughs> honestly feel disturbed. Yeah. And then they feel helpless because it seems like it's a global issue and there they are just one little person. Yeah, see, I don't feel that. Right. Well, well they might. I mean, right. That's where some people so, do. Some people might. Right. right. And so a way that a person who gets disturbed or feels that they don't like what's happening in mm -hmm. the world is to stop when they're in the midst of experiencing not liking it. Mm -hmm. That's the disturbance, right? I don't like this. Mm. And instead of um, signing petitions or whatever, I mean, those things can help, but with, with, if the energy hasn't been met, it just gets pushed around and put into the next thing and put into the fight against the bad guys and here's yeah. the good guys and here's the bad guys. And that doesn't, actually, that just shuffles the energy around. Mm -hmm. um, but people feel better because they feel like they're doing something. Yeah. And so what I'm saying is first, whatever it is that you want to change, instead of attempting to change it, uh, feel the wanting to change it first. Feel where it touches you inside. Feel where uh, it touches something and feel the touch. Breathe, relax open and feel that. And then after they've experienced whatever that is in the interior looking aspect of, mm -hmm. of experiencing life, um, that actually helps dissipate the energy. Mm. Or at a minimum will give them some sort of um, learning about themselves that will be a gift, that will be a, a, usually my finding is that love will show up. Even when people are being murdered and yeah. horrible things are happening, um, the personal experience, if it's explored, will reveal love. And mm -hmm. when that happens, that's the energy trans transformed. Yeah, that's a good advice. I mean, when you think about it, there's so many polarizing issues in society, you know, abortion, gun control, 
uh, race issues, yep. um, you know, gay issues, all kinds of things. That, like this, that lady in Kentucky who refused to issue marriage licenses to gay people and had to go to jail for five years and uh, five five days. And uh, you know, there's there's all this sort of and, and you see these people sh on the news shouting at each other from you know nose to nose practically uh, uh, over uh, completely one disturbed. Of these <laughs> yeah, and and completely. You're totally wrong. I'm totally right. And so what the you're saying, struggle. yeah, so, yeah. so kind of elaborate again on what you just said in light of those examples I just gave, you know, instead of, instead of spitting each other's faces That's and right. yelling so at each other. So say we were fighting yeah. at each other, right. right, then I would say, hold on a moment, can you just stop yeah. right now? I just need to feel what's going on right now inside. Mm -hmm. And breathing and relaxing the body open and feeling what's going on inside. Because when a person is in the fight, usually they're contracted because they're moving forward and they're fighting something outside of themselves. And that's what keeps that energy alive. Mm. Interesting point. There's a line from a Dylan song. He said, um, you know, you're right from your side and I'm right from mine. Um, and there's that Buffalo Springfield song, you know, <laughs> people carrying signs mostly say, hooray from my side. Yeah. Um, and, right. uh, and there's some truth in that, you know, because really both are right. You know, if you look at some of these issues, abortion, for instance, yep. and try to put yourself in the other person's shoes, they're right from exactly, their side. You know, exactly. they have they have valid concerns and well, issues, and well, whichever side you're. You know you're, what? I don't even. It's not even really a case of right or wrong. What right. it is is that everybody's moving from a place of caring and love. Right. At some level, somewhere, and then, in some people, that's been distorted by traumatic experiences, and but they're still attempting to figure out their way of doing the right thing, of being the way that they think they should be, and, and you know, they're still coming from that place. Mm -hmm. um, if I could be with them personally, I can show any person, no matter what's going on, um, that it, it's love. Yeah. And then when that person settles down into that, I don't know, there's all sorts of stuff that can happen, mm -hmm. because then they're in this open receiving place because it's love. Mm. It can you can open anybody. Just even the word um, creates an opening. Mm -hmm. So if a person can meet themselves in the fray of it, where they feel disturbed by the news globally, or even like in the masculine and feminine thing, um, where there's a lot of violence uh, towards women. Sure. Right. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of kind rape, of just rape and spousal yeah. abuse, or and even that kind of thing. even slimy stuff. Just you know, Porn. offhand remarks, oh. and you know, uh, th and there's a and, and women can feel that. Yeah. You know, you can go into a, a store and see some guy check you up and down, uh -huh. and instantly what happens is the woman will then go, ooh, you know, yeah. they'll and they'll close away from the try to protect themselves. But the tricky part with consciousness is. If they're aware that they're being slimy, mm -hmm. it's in. It's already, the information's already in the body. Yeah. And what appears here as a body, in the mm -hmm. energetics of being a human being. Yeah. So when that sliminess has happened, to close to it is basically locking the energy in. Mm -hmm. And then when that energy is locked in, more sliminess, because it magnetizes whatever it is inside, outside. So, um so what you're suggesting, I think, is that the more we can, can become sensitized to what's going on inside of us... Well, if we recognize that it's already occurred, stopping to, and protecting, closing to something isn't going to work. Right. Because you, if, if you have perceived it to have happened, it's in. So in that example of uh, a guy being, you know... Right. However that Checking is... Checking you out. Yeah. The, yeah. To know that you've already received that energy and to then let it fall through the system, almost like you're the particles mm. that, uh, that, that, that you are, right? That just to relax open and let their energy fit, complete its route through you. Hmm. And then it's a funny thing, in the moment, often the sliminess stops completely. Yeah. Because part of that, that creates that whole man-woman thing like that is because the protection comes up, and then that gives them something to bounce against as well. Yeah. It's I want physics. to make sure that people can understand what you're saying and to the point where they could actually do it. Yes. Because it's a little abstract. Um, oh, okay. I, I have this friend who, um, she said she's, all of her life, she's, or most of her life, she's been 
so sensitive that she's a, she can hear people's thoughts and stuff. Mm -hmm. And when she was in college, you know, she, um, you know, be walking across campus and uh, and could really pick up on what all these guys were thinking as they were watching her walk. And she kind of resorted to wearing very baggy kind of unfeminine yes. clothing so as to just make herself more inconspicuous to them. Yeah. Um, so well, it's the, perhaps using that as an example. The burka, right? Yeah, that kind of thing, <laughs> yeah. right, exactly. Yeah, exactly what she, she burkered herself. To <laughs> yeah. Uh, so how, what's, what's a take? Try to bring this a little bit more concretely so that people listening can actually apply it in their lives. And otherwise, okay, it might just so be some words they hear that they'll forget how to do. Right. Um, so you, but you understand the part, uh, that part's clear about uh, Well, you said perception. about letting it pass through you. Right. Uh, as opposed to what? Let's say you walk into a store and you pick up some guy checking you out, and you could get all incensed and, and um, yeah, you're or close. defensive. Basically, or, your system will say no. Yeah. And it's recognizing your system saying no, because that's going to happen. And then seeing, it's, it's quite a vulnerable thing to do, mm -hmm. to see if you can relax your body open. And then that re lets the energy, you're no longer holding, so the energy can fall in the openness. Would part of it just being, rather than reacting to the guy one way or the other, just ignore him? Ignoring too. Because yeah. you're not ignoring. You're, the information's already in the energetic system of a human being that you are. Right? If perception has happened, it's already in. Because perception is like a, it's not an inside or, because everything's being experienced here. Mm -hmm. Consciousness is experiencing itself uh, here. Right? It's a different, little bit different than that here, even though there's no separation. Yeah. But you know that things come in all the time, and we can either hang on to them or not. Uh, maybe, and maybe that's what you mean about letting it pass through. Like there's this Vedic sort of analogy about you know, making a line in stone, or making a line in sand, or making a line in water, or making a line in air. In every case, a line is made, but the different media that you're making it in hold it to, to greater, you know, greater or lesser degrees of time. So the air, of course, whew, line, deep line is made, but it's gone as soon as it's made. Whereas stone, you etch it, and it's there for years. So you know, somebody might be looked at in a store and still be thinking about it a month later. You know, oh, that stupid guy in exactly. the store. And, well, and I'm going to keep dressing this way because I don't want people to look at me. Like, and, and somebody it, else, it case, might be gone uh, the instant it happens. Right. It, it might not even disturb the next person. They might not even notice. Right. That's what right? I mean about... But it, it may not be about sensitivities. It just might be that they don't have that energy uh, that needs to be jostled, right? So, so out of all the people, um, it, it usually happens when somebody does have something that, they, that consciousness wants to be conscious of. Mm -hmm. So if consciousness is walking around as this woman or as this man, right? Um, usually there's something that if that energy goes in and they've marked it in rock, like you say, yeah. and it like totally two months later, they're still, still disturbed by that. They're still that means the energy's inside. Uh -huh. That dwelling is the energy. Yeah. And so we can have that happen again and again and again, mm -hmm. or we can say, "Hey, consciousness is attempting to get our attention with this." Yeah. What What is this really about? Because this whole attention thing and this the slimy attitude or whatever is is not what it's really about. That's just what's there to disturb the energy so we can find it. Mm. And then once we find it, once we recognize that we've said no to something and we've contracted, then if you can feel that you've said no or contracted or you're trying to protect it or you're trying to get away or ignore, mm -hmm. to relax open to ignoring happening, then relaxing the body open, relaxing the energy field, However somebody can relax, if somebody can contract their body and just tighten, like right now, if you tighten your body, mm -hmm. then you know how to relax it. Right. So it's that still, that's that kind of action, uh, to relax open, or like I said earlier, in, if we were having a fight, to stop and relax open and feel what the root inside, what's going on in the uh, interior, because if it's happening at all on the outside, there, there's going to be some sort of energy inside, and it might be different, it might not look like the sliminess, or, and it might look like something that somewhere the woman picked up that somebody said they're slimy and they have felt themselves to be slimy ever since mm -hmm. at some level. 
And so sliminess keeps happening on the outside until they accept and feel into and open and see what that's about, what it opens. And it's always a gift, mm -hmm. the present. Um, and it always points to some sweet bit mm. that, that the person gets to know themselves. Now we're talking about a fairly minor situation where some guy looks at you in a store, but obviously there are much more intense situations that people encounter, you know, spousal abuse or, you know, a, a, a boss at work who is really abusive and, and nasty and, you know, critical or, I don't know, all kinds of rough stuff that, that people encounter in life. So um, with those sort of things, it, it might be more in the category of easier said than done. Then, well, no, no, I'm 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 speaking from from personal experience of having had violent uh, action taken mm -hmm. against myself, or really, it's against the perpetrator himself. Yeah. Um, when you understand what's really more happening, what's really happening, yeah. but that was my question to myself over over time. If it's all love, how could this be love? Right. How could being raped be love? Mm -hmm. You were raped? Yeah. Wow. I don't remember if you told me that before. No, no, I hadn't. I hadn't yeah. really... I'm, I'm just starting to write about it now mm -hmm. um, as the understanding yeah. of how, come, how do I know what I'm talking about. Right. So now you're talking about something that happened years ago and, and you're looking at it from a much more broad and detached perspective than you were when it was happening. And so, um, you know, the way you were talking a minute ago about the guy in the store, you were ta describing a way of reacting to it or dealing with it as it was happening. But how would you, how, not, you know, perish the thought, how would you deal with actually being raped uh, as it was happening or something of, of that intensity and, har and horror? Um, is there anything? Of well, I, 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 we were carjacked by uh, people. Uh -huh. With who had two semi-automatics and rifle, you know, guns pointing at us and were uh -huh. threatening us with them to steal our car. Yeah, and we were stopped at gunpoint and forced out of our car. Uh -huh. um, that's fairly. That's pretty intense. Right, and and people might consider that violent. And, and this was not that long ago. 2012. So three yeah. years. Yeah. And you were raped then. No. No, no, no. No. Years ago. <laughs> no. No. Uh, thank you. Thankfully, no. I was okay. not. Um, I'm glad I asked that because yeah. people might have jumped to that conclusion just now. <laughs> right. No, yeah. no, no. When I was raped, I was seven years old. Oh. And again, uh -huh. when uh, I was 18. Uh-huh. And, and as I know, and you probably know this, people have experienced much worse yeah. happenings uh, more ongoingly sure, than that. Yeah. Shelley um, Ray, whom I interviewed a few months ago, was raped by her father from the age of nine to 14. Right. And... Uh, uh, I mean, it's weird that we're dwelling on this stuff, but, you know, this... Well, it's not weird because this is the balance and the harmony that consciousness is attempting to come to. Yeah. How are we going to be with these violent... Instead of trying to stop perpetrators from doing such things, the mm -hmm. energy needs to be dissipated. Mm -hmm. and, and perpetrators need to be stopped, but... Well, perpetrators will stop as the energy is dissipated. Whoa. So, I mean, that might sound like you're saying that the... Rape is the fault of the victim. No. Once it's happened, like you've changed. If you change your energy, you're not gonna. The perpetrator won't be motivated to. Well, there's that part too. That's the natural happening when the energy comes into harmony within. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is, once such things have happened, how do we become harmonious with ourselves? And the side effect of that is the dissipation of a perpetrator. Mm. So, so it's not to say that it didn't happen, um, but on a bigger picture scale, how come we're finding out more about this now is because we're able to actually be with it more now mm. at a deeper level and find our way with this to bring harmony to it. But it, it isn't about... Um, are, you speak, are you using the we in the collective sense now or the, the, how we are finding out more about this? You mean as a society? Yes, as, as a human species uh -huh. um, have become much more able and aware of what's going on yeah. uh, in a much more real sense and many more people are waking up and mm. in that awakenedness uh, the, the reality of what's happening here is much more clear. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Ho hopefully this will write directly what we've been saying but one thing I've been noticing uh, over the last couple of years as the news 
unfolds, is that tragic events happen, and they become um, they become catalysts for social change. You know, like the guy getting shot in Ferguson, Missouri, and then that brought up the whole Black Lives Matter thing, and some progress is made. Yep. You know. Um, or, I don't know, we could probably think of other examples, but... Well, well in the energetics, you see, I see it as energetics. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's bigger energetics and there's smaller ones. With the Ferguson stuff, it's a, it's, it's a pressure that's been there for some time yeah. and it needed to erupt, right. just like a volcano. So the same thing happens. And the guy becomes almost like a sacrificial lamb. He, he gets shot, but then this big social change happens and then things are never quite the same after they're, they're, they've improved. Right, or there's yeah. an invitation that improvement can happen. Right, you know, and if it's if it's taken, if the invitation is taken, hmm. in all of this stuff, it's that's that's why it's happening is because harmony is wanting to find itself. Yeah, and so can we go along with that, and and in the recognition of love, that helps us. To it helps me for sure, in exploring uh, the upheaval happenings in my own life. Mm -hmm. And what looked like violence and was violent uh, in the happening, certainly um, both times violent, um, and the repercussions that came and, and, and changed me. Um, and yet, you know, how can I find the love of it? And, and part of that is in, in my embracing and learning how to bring harmony to myself. Uh, as harmony is being invited, because it's not an all at once thing, it's a long time thing to, um, you know, reveal it, have it revealed to myself. Sure, it's none of this stuff is, is an overnight. You know? No, it's a, but it's with a the sensitivities that, yeah. and the seeing of it as energy and seeing it as love, now I can really support other people. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's the love of it. I mean, the invitation to me personally was, can I find the love? Mm. Can I really unearth the love of this? Is it all love or not? And in my heart, I knew it had to be, so I was wanting to find my way with that. Yeah. That's an interesting point that you bring up, which is that um, you know, there's so many people I know who are serving in some sort of teaching capacity now, who who are kind of equipped with abilities that they wouldn't have had had they not gone through certain difficult things. It's almost like they had to go through those things to be to eventually end up as someone who could help others go through similar things, you know. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that's that is harmony attempting to happen. Yeah. That's how it how it how it's doing its thing. Mm. <laughs> and so I I don't say, you know, that children or, or people, men or women, uh, because you know it's happening to boys and and men too. All sorts of violent sure. happenings. Sure. Yeah. Um, and and so it's not just women. It's it's humans. <laughs> yeah. And. Um, oh, I mean, look at there's so many examples. I mean, there's so you, many. Look at these yeah. kids that are getting uh, you know pressed into being soldiers at the age of 12 in Africa. Exactly. And, uh, I was thinking of the military myself yeah. as well. That just even the whole mentality of of, of being trained to kill people mm. um, is something in and of itself. Yeah. So, but that's not part of my experience. So, um, w you know, all of these happenings um, have been a support to who I am today. Mm -hmm. So I can see that. I can't take them out of my life. I can't say I wish it hadn't happened yeah. because um, the incredible exposure of, of compassion is real because I, I, in the revealing of what happened, the natural response is incredible uh, compassion for the little girl. Um, and the little girl that you were? Yeah, yeah. That were, yeah, M, I don't know, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, she's here when she's here, you know, yeah. and, and everybody knows that. It's, it's, uh, it's beautiful. It's falling in with self, falling in love. Hmm. That, that's the real action of it. And, um, 
And then as that happens, as a balance in the human system and more harmony happens, this is the harmlessness that Buddha spoke of. Mm. Without having energy caught and held inside, when that goes on, it's, it's harmless because there's no energy to it. Mm. Whereas if there's anger and pent-up rage and uh, us and them and um, all that, then it gets held. It it's it's got some power. Yeah, that's an important thing. There's uh, there's a principle in physics called the Meissner effect, and uh, when something becomes sort of a super cooled to the point of near absolute zero, I think I think this is the way it works. I might be getting my principles mixed up, but anyway, this this sort of macroscopic quantum coherence takes place, and the uh, the thing becomes impervious to uh, incoherent influences. They just sort of pass right through it. Uh, whereas something that's in a more chaotic state, uh, you know, holds those in, those Stangled. those incoherence yeah. in, in, incoherent things. So what, what you're and pardon me if I've slaughtered that prin principle from physics. It was like 40 years ago <laughs> that, I, good to that me. I was studying that. Um, but uh, <laughs> but uh, what the, the principle is that we can establish uh, uh, an internal state of coherence or sort of a sort of a superfluidity of consciousness, which an uh, untangled yeah untangled, which makes us sort of like um, impervious to. Uh, incoherent influence. Well, it, it, there's oneness that's here. Self is moving as one mm. bit. And there's nothing that, you know, we know that, right? Mm -hmm. you, you can see it when you drop a pebble in, in water and the ripple effect, well, just going like that is the same thing. Mm -hmm. There's a ripple effect to that. Sure. We just don't see it quite as obviously as we do with water. Mm -hmm. But it's the same. Oh, yeah. And and so everything influences everything, right? Everything influences everything, yeah. and so I just this slowed the rotation of the Earth down by doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I can add some jokes, <laughs> but, <I won't. laughs> but yeah, I don't know, right? Um, certainly, you know, are we going to tilt more this way or more that way? Um, we could have fun with it, but but mostly that interior exterior what happens on the outside is a reflection of the inside if it's disturbing if it's not disturbing like you saw 9-11 happen yeah. uh, it wasn't a disturbance it's none of your business huh. right so it's where you're called is where you're disturbed yeah well it, it, it is my business in the sense that I feel that I can have an influence on the world through my right, through what I do and thereby contribute positively to avert situations like that, right. and, you know, and so on. I, I feel like we all exert an influence continuously and that anything that happens in the world is just sort of a, uh, an outcropping of the collective influence that we've all generated. Uh, just like if you have a boil on your skin or something, it's just there's some something in the blood that's impure that's cropping up here as a boil or there as a wart or, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And so all these. But it also might be that somebody's got an aversion to warts, and they need to be. Yeah. <laughs> right? But all these be. all these world events are just sort of symptomatic of of um, ele elements in collective consciousness that we have all that we all contribute to constantly, and uh, they just sort of crop up here and there um, when. Right. As an invitation uh, for harmony. Yeah. I mean, consciousness is all of it, right? Even the people right. who aren't conscious of being. Consciousness. They, 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 it's not that they're less part of consciousness. Right. Right? There, there isn't a less or a more uh, at all. Mm -hmm. um, but as consciousness gets to know itself, uh, then there's a strength in that. Yeah. So when I say that I you know, wasn't disturbed by 9 11 and I feel like I can make it. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, I, I, I didn't mean that. You, uh -huh. Just from the way that you, sh you saw it and you felt, but you didn't feel, they didn't yeah. create. Uh, Havoc is what I mean. Right. I feel like, okay, well, there's a very significant uh, symptom of some, uh, some un underlying um, disharmony in collective consciousness, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, if anything, it would inspire me to redouble my efforts to be a positive contributor to collective consciousness. Yeah. And that's what happened with me with Columbine. Cause I, right, same I, idea. I, 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 I 
up until that point, I had been kind of avoiding the news. Right. And then I ended up uh, in San Francisco, at, uh, and a friend um, let me stay at her mother's mm -hmm. apartment, and um, there on the table, sort of bold face, right out front, was the Times Magazine with Columbine, mm -hmm. and I knew when I saw it that I, it was meant, it kind of shouted at me, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I w didn't want to, but I, but I picked it up, and that's mm -hmm. and that's. I let myself be exposed to the actual information, of what happened, and and felt. Um, connected, mm -hmm. uh, to that and to the families. Um, of 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 the yeah. all the kids, the kids that were, the kids that 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 shot the kids and the kids. Um, that were shot right. and their families, mm -hmm. you know, all of that in the school and the, the shock of it, um, d feeling into the energetics of the whole thing. And then I was looking at, well, why? why what, what does consciousness want to know, have me know about this? Yeah. What, what good is that? And then I saw it made me more sure, more courageous, and more determined to um, be of service mm -hmm. to bringing harmony, yeah, to supporting harmony. I mean, bringing harmony within myself, but it it made me that much more clear, that yeah. much more divine. That so we're kind of saying the same thing the here, exactly. You know that these external events, rather than disturbing us, um, inspire us in, 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 to be more. Yeah, when they do. Uh, yeah, yeah, be more effective. Be yeah. more, be a greater contributor. Right. The only part that I, I like to to. Uh, Add to that because it sounds like a rule, then, right? That it's okay, just well, I'm not natural going to, inclination, right? It's it's got to be a truthful non-disturbance, and it's not to say that you're not supposed to be disturbed, either. right? If you're disturbed, you're disturbed. If you're disturbed, it's just <laughs> consciousness being disturbed, yeah. And we get to open to it, or you can close it. I mean, the habit, or even the I don't even know if it's an addiction or a habit, or, because most people are saying no, yeah, to what's going on. It's saying no to what is, in a way, but the, even the no is beautiful because it yeah. marks that something has happened. Yeah. Because then we, if we've said no, that's where we can feel no happening so that we can open to it in, in our own time as we're comfortable with ourselves to have a space to feel into, okay, what just really happened there? Yeah. Now, I wouldn't judge anybody who is disturbed by, by things like that. Uh, I'm not saying that you know the way Just I so react. So people don't is, take it as a rule. Yeah, what I'm I remember. Um, well, I remember hearing about Rosie O'Donnell's reaction to Columbine. She sat in the bathtub and cried all night. You know, and I thought that was very touching. You know, it's not the way I would react. And, mm -hmm. I, and sometimes I wish I could react more like that to things. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes it'd be, it would feel good to just cry, but it's you know the way I'm wired, it just doesn't work that way. Um, mm -hmm. But, as far uh, as you know. So as far, far as I know, so far. <laughs> right. I could end up becoming a total blubbering fool <laughs> any day now. <laughs> and I have friends actually who've done that. They've undergone some big shift in consciousness and they can't go to movies anymore because they make a scene in the theater <laughs> crying. And <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Well, because the tears want to be, right, that's sadness or grief finding its own way to harmony. Yeah. It can only be held for so long. And, you know, how many people have been told, you know, don't cry. Sure. Right? As yeah. soon as a little kid's crying, like it, everybody will run to the kid saying, oh, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. Yeah, I'll give you a candy. And it's like, here. yeah, have yeah. some of this. Or, and they or, try to stop Or stop that. crying, I'll give you something to cry about. <laughs> Both, right? Yeah. Exactly. And, and so that's commonplace. And, and it's, it's an undoing of that. And going, okay, sadness is here. Yes to this sadness. Mm. Yes. Oh, let it take me. Yeah. Let it take me all the way. As far as it can take me. <clears throat> yeah. So what we got here? We got a few little notes of things we were going to talk about. What haven't we talked okay. about here? Well, we talked about global issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, responsibility. People want to help. They feel well, helpless, disempowered. Right. Yeah. Responsibility is is mm -hmm. also. We sort of touched on it in the examples, mm -hmm. um, but instead of. Like it's a big thing that people take on responsibilities of their kids and their job, and they feel overloaded mm. with responsibilities. All these so much pressure, pressure that they think they're responsible for. 
when really they are just a movement of energy, mm -hmm. um, and they're responsible for the system that they are to feed and clothe that, um, and it's only in the moment. There's no longevity to the moment, right? It's it's in this moment. Uh, okay, I need to have shelter, mm -hmm. so I need to pay for that shelter. So the responsibility would be to look around to see, okay, well, how can that need be met? You know, look for possibilities and what wants to happen in the moment, and uh, to provide for yourself, right? Um, the tricky part is, is that people then hold on to responsibilities, responsible for um, their partner, responsible for their children, and you know, in a way, you you are, um, but not as a controlling of their happiness. That like people feel like, you know, mm. and, and it's genuine. People want their kids to be happy, but it's not up to them to make their kids happy. Their kids, they can support their kids to find happiness. Yeah. So it's like just looking at the word responsibility and looking at, okay, uh, what is there in this moment to respond to? Mm. And that's an easier way to be with responsibility. In each moment, how will I respond right now? And yeah. how will I respond right now? It's an in the moment happening rather than anything that, that goes beyond the moment. Yeah. Is that? Yeah, I think I know what you mean. And it kind of reminds me of the alcoholic's um, oath or whatever it is where they say, you know, the, the, the ability to change things I can change, you know, accept the things I can't change and the wisdom to know the difference. Right. You know, there's, there's certain things for, for which we have, over which we have jurisdiction or appear to have. Yeah. And and you know there are many other things over which we don't, and uh, many people muddle up the the lines between those and get yeah. themselves all stressed out trying to control and things that are, should really be allowed to run their own course. Is that yeah. what you're saying? Well, to to be able to respond, yeah, is resp being responsible. To respond to the moment rather than taking something on as a job like. Uh, and, and making it a, a something that I'm responsible for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think another nice thing about that word responsibility is that it implies that our ability to respond can be um, augmented and, and enhanced and improved. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you know, so it's... Uh, well, it's that the global issues, right? Yeah. To be responsible would be to see how you respond in mm -hmm. the moment to whatever it is that's happening. Able to respond. Response able. Yeah. And regarding global issues, there's a, a, you know, the, there's a sort of a certain pace of, of life and of change that seems to be accelerating more and more. Um, and, you know, so we have to be sort of fit to, to deal with the increasing intensity and, and pace that the world is, seems to be undergoing. Um, I mean, if you have a a donkey and it can barely carry a load, you have two options, strengthen the donkey or lighten the load. Mm -hmm. uh, and we may not have the option of slowing down the world. Uh, and, you know, there's just so much going on, but if we... Right, but if the responsibility... Yeah, if we can... What, what often people do is they think about where the donkey's going, where they have to get to, mm -hmm. instead of taking care of the donkey. Right. And so that's, that's it, just taking care of where you are is the responsibility. Mm -hmm. And you only have this moment. Yeah. There is no other moment than this one. So it's, it's quite vital in the mix of what appears as life. That's an, yeah, you're saying a lot of good things. Um, that I see very often people fretting and fuming about stuff that isn't, they're not accomplishing anything by doing that because it's not now. You know, um, what if this happens? What if that happens? Mm -hmm. So she said that, and he said that, and yada, 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 yada. Mm -hmm. And it's like they're not having any influence on any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, it's completely outside the realm of their control or, or influence. Well, the only thing that's happening energetically is that they're staying at a surface level because possibly it's just uncomfortable to be where they are. Yeah. So it's, it's to, to go, oh, especially complaint. I'm complaining. In some way, 
well, if they only did this, if they only did that, and da 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 like that. Right. Okay, wait a moment, wait a moment, wait a moment. What's happening right here? Yeah. Right? Because it's the horizontal living, you know, they did this, they're going to do that. So if someone uh, who's close to you, we don't want to pick on Steve anymore, but if someone who's <laughs> close to you is doing that sort of thing, um, do, have you b b found that you're able to bring them into this and, you know, get... Yeah. get them out of that or do you have to just let them do their thing they are not my responsibility they're not yeah but I if there's someone invite. close to you yeah how, how would you invite them to sort of I hey invite. chill you know let's be right. what's going on feel where you're sitting yeah right feel the pressure of your body being held by the chair yeah. here. if they want to hear that otherwise they might just if get mad if they're not available and they, they need to be in the swing of the let drama blow off steam yeah then <laughs> that, and that's the way it is. I, I give it a go and yeah. invite, but uh, sometimes it's not heard as supportive. <laughs> One <laughs> good thing you is know, you just set, the, irritated set the example, you know, if you're not doing it yourself and, and they... The thing is, I don't even need to say anything right. a lot of times because I can see what's going on and it doesn't bother me. Yeah. And, and, and it's getting so light in people around me that it's not really bothering them either. <laughs> what do you mean by that? That's getting well, so light in people around you? Well, I'm speaking of Steve, too, oh. that, that uh, when he gets into a kerfuffle... He doesn't do it much. Yeah. It, it's just not as heavy or dense as it used to be. Yeah, yeah. He used to believe in it more. Right. And I would say that that's happening less Yeah. Uh, as he's um, settled more deeply into himself mm -hmm. over time. Um, and that's his own doing, not to do with me. Sure. So I can only support people, too, if they're available to that, not... I don't get them to do anything. Yeah just to, you know, clarify the language a little. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of, it's funny in this particular conversation we keep going back to societal events, but, you know, again, there are so many examples where people are so riled up, you know, and, and starting to riot in the streets and, and so on over something, and various community leaders and, and so on try to get people to, to just settle down and, and be more communicative and be more tuned in to themselves rather than, you know, focused on this, the, the apparent, you know, problem. enemy yeah. or problem yeah. and, uh, and all. It's like that macrocosmic level of it is, is mirrored in, our, in, our, right. in the microcosm and, of our personal lives. And that's what that first thing was. People want to help. They feel helpless. Yeah. And so when they feel that someone has power over them, uh, the government, or, and something's unfair, mm -hmm. they feel helpless. And nobody likes to feel helpless. And right. so they fight, and they're fighting their own helplessness. Instead of, and it's not to be helpless, is quite different than to feel. What does helplessness feel like? And most people are avoiding that, so more helpless happens, more, you know. So consciousness keeps riling this up until people are getting that, oh, wait a moment, what if I felt helpless? What if I really saw and felt how helpless I am here because... We're not even, you know, really, who's having the thoughts? Mm. They just come in, something's perceiving it, and we imagine it's us, but they came out of nowhere. We came out, you know, like we didn't plant our nose or eyeballs or... <laughs> I certainly didn't plant no, our nose. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some people say that maybe we did, you know, that it's somehow... Yeah, that's but, true. But I don't it's know. It's all I, karma or I'm whatever. all surprised when I see, you know, like even earlier before when we were getting to this... Um, interview, uh -huh. you know, there's definitely been a noticing as I've been a woman in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, what is that about? I don't know, but there's nothing sure about anything. Mm -hmm. um, but I, there's a marked difference I've seen in what it appears that a man and his appearance and a woman and how she's supposed to be with her appearance. Oh, I see. And As we were sitting down here on the couch and you were wor worrying about which side you want to show to the camera. Worrying that kind of thing. Not I was, worrying about it. I was including aware that, of it. that it's okay yeah. for me to flirt around with this. It's okay, you know, like to wear a sure. glitter, glittery thing. Why not? And Well, why not, right? Because yeah. it's just what's been given to me. Yeah. And uh, so I've learned to kind of have fun with that. Yeah. Um, and be with myself as a woman. Um, and and it, it, in a way, partly because I don't know how many, it seems like sometimes that 
I've been more often a man than a woman in, in, past, in, in lives. past lives. Could be. But, yeah. you know, I don't hold on to anything. It's just information yeah. comes if it's supportive and it looks like past life information. Sure. Well, according to Buddhist traditions, you know, we've, we've been, I think it was the, the Buddha who said that we've had so many lives that if you took all the bones from all those bodies, they would be higher than the Himalayas, you know, <laughs> piled them up. So we've done everything, you know, we've been murdered, we've been murderers, we've been, you know, raped, we've been rapists, we've been right. this, that, and on opposite sides of just about every experience you can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's where, like, I, I don't really look at that that much. I just look at, okay, if the whole thing is love playing itself out, mm -hmm. if consciousness is getting to know itself in this action or getting to love itself, whatever doesn't look like that, doesn't look like love directly or feel like love, it's an invitation. And it, then that exploration in curiosity, not in, okay, prove it to me how this is love. Um, although people have come to satsang and, and said, oh, what do you mean? You can't say, you know, tell me how this is love. And, and Pointing out some horrible thing or something and saying, how, tell every me how that is love. Every time I've been able to, the person... Tell me how Auschwitz was love, that kind of uh, objection, you mean? Um... Or, or well, I can, I can support them, yeah. Whatever feels wrong um, to that particular person, I've been able to support them to see the love of it. Yeah. Not as, as if the action of somebody being strangled is a loving action. Mm -hmm. It's more once something has happened, because it, it, people tend to generalize and say, this is bad and this is good. Mm -hmm. And... What I like to say is, is it disturbing, is it not disturbing? If it's not disturbing, it's nothing to do with you. Mm. If it is, here's consciousness looking for harmony. Mm. So, I, uh, uh, okay, so let's emphasize that point just a little bit. So you're saying that anything which disturbs us, I think we've touched upon yes, this a yes. few times, anything which disturbs us is an invitation to finish the sentence. To find the love of it. To find the love of it. Yes. Uh, inwardly, right? Because it, mm -hmm. what it'll be, it's, I mean, we've heard that the ocean, the depth of the ocean and the waves on the ocean, that analogy. Mm -hmm. um, but whatever is the disturbing, it's actually like a storm on the surface of the water. But the deep sow is there. Right. But usually people are more entertained by the waves going mm -hmm. on and, and the fray of it. And because they feel like they exist when that happens. Yeah. Right? There, there's something having a hard time, and so that really accentuates existence itself. Interesting point. Yeah, I've, I've often felt that, that there's, the ego wants to sort of maintain its integrity, its identity. It's as if it was here. Yeah. And, <laughs> and controversy helps it do that. I mean, I, I've started a number of internet chat groups over the years, and uh, one in particular which has, you know, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of messages on it, posted to it. And, uh, and so many of those messages are just people sniping at each other, you know, just battling. And I, I look at that and, and I think, you know, they're just aggrandizing their egos. They're just trying to sort of fortify, you know, their, their egos. And, and that's, why, that's why people do like that. And, and if they could just relax and appreciate the other person, you know, the ego kind of loses its... Um, Fortification, it's it's rigidity, it's it's shell-like nature, and and kind of, and dissolves into a sort of a greater oneness. Mm -hmm. Is this? I, I, are we going off on a tangent here? Or is that kind of the point you were just making? Well, partly I've been um, responding to the word ego, <laughs> is as you talk, because I don't actually yeah. like to use that word because there really isn't the, one. Right? There's a play of energy in the moment. Right. And in that, I mean, yes, there's... But there appears to be one when you, when you fortify it through creating th th strife. An and existence so I, of I. Yeah, it, yeah. Yeah, so I would agree with you. I, yeah, I, I would call it I'm not saying it has any I. ultimate reality to it, right. but, but the, the sort of the... Um, it's just that the ego, I don't like to um, fortify the existence of something called an ego mm -hmm. um, by saying it's real. Right. So I like to... Yeah. dissipate that uh, and, and say uh, in some moments um, there's a fortification as if there's an I mm -hmm. 
by by creating a disturbance of the experience so it can feel like like it's alive. Yeah. Compared to feeling nothing, which which is the scary part of waking up. Right? Uh huh. No, I think that concurs with what I just said about the chat group. It does. Group. It you does. Know, it, it does in its, its like, own way. It's just the only Yeah, only they're just part sort of hyping like, up a false thing, <laughs> yeah. you know, trying to whip it into existence and keep it in existence. And Using words and thoughts to, yeah, to fortify it. Yeah, to fortify it. Yeah. And, and whereas in, and, it, and it, there's a kind of a scariness to allowing it to just sort of dissipate or, or dissolve and back to its source in which they're it is found never to... They're more comfortable with the hardness. Uh, yeah. With the fray. Or, right. or, 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 you know <laughs> the, the the fight of of that that there's there's something that that they're comfortable with. It's like it's like people who eat meat. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're more comfortable with how long it takes for meat to digest through the system <laughs> than uh, and and when they let go of that, they miss that because that's what they've learned to be in their comfort zone. Mm. Uh, that's a whole other topic. It is a whole other topic, but uh, there it was, a great example. <laughs> yeah. <I laughs> From mean, my own experience of having eaten meat mm -hmm. and then not eating meat. Yeah. That there's uh, a definite difference in uh, digestion. Sure. I felt quite different, and it was new and unknown and different than how I used to feel. Yeah, and there are whole books written about how human beings aren't designed to eat meat and so on and so forth. And I have friends who say they, you know, feel much better when they started eating meat again, that they need it, and that, you know, as Northern Europeans were, were genetically, you know, constructed mm -hmm. over many generations to have a, a certain diet and we can't change abruptly and so on and so forth. But uh, that's a whole another ball of wax <laughs> that, yeah. that yeah. you know, we could argue about forever, but and I don't actually have a position on it because I don't know. No, I only know for my own self that yeah. there was a difference and often people have said that when they uh, eat vegetarian meals that that's what they miss. Right. They don't feel full for as long. Sure. And it's just that's a good thing. They like, yeah, right. <laughs> really, it, that's a good thing. And there's been quite a bit of information on that. Um, Anyway, I felt I felt felt so much better and so much more light and mm. flowing and able and more energy, stronger everything. That uh, there was no question. There's a saying in the yogic literature that you should always feel a little bit hungry after every meal. Mm -hmm. You know, you should never eat to satiation. In Christianity too, in, in the it? Catholic, it was uh, it's a sin to eat when if you're not hungry. Yeah, and also to to totally satiate yourself 100% or 150% right. or something like that, yeah. that uh, there are very good physiological reasons for not doing that yeah. and spiritual reasons in terms of if you're really keen on spiritual right. evolution. Yeah. yeah, no, definitely uh, people have asked sometimes about um, whether to serve cookies and tea and stuff at satsang they're hosting, mm -hmm. satsang with canela and um, tea, I, you know, and I... Mm -hmm. I do have a little thing for chocolate. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I mean, <laughs> people have come to know that, oh, but it's not the some. best. It's not the best thing for <laughs> meditation. It's it's different, it's shall a, we say? Yeah. But it is nice to, um, especially if people are more used to, yeah, um, eating a lot and chatting with the eating and, mm -hmm. you know, there's a whole sort of mechanism to that that we can, with just tea. It doesn't happen quite so strongly. <laughs> I've seen people though, spiritual people pamper themselves to the point of neurosis, you know, where they, they just become so fussy about what they put in their bodies that they can't put anything in them anymore. Um, you know, so you can, you have to find a happy medium with uh, all right. the, these issues. Yeah, and uh, that, that's too for myself to, uh, I mean, I am in a, we are in a pretty rural area here, yeah. um, fairly kind of secluded in some ways, but then I travel out and, and you know, I'm on flights and all sorts of stuff that um, isn't the easiest, but if, if I'm, I'm here to be human. Right. And, um, you know, that's, I'm not here to be just a light body. Right. Uh, and, and, uh, Breathinarian or something. Yeah. yeah. Although I did do the no eating process. Fasting? Um, the no eating process. What is that? That's no eating. <laughs> or, or drinking. That's, that's the or breatharian. Anything? Uh, drinking, I still drank some fluids, yeah. But and I, How and long I didn't did you do that for long enough to know that I didn't need to eat, and long enough to well, wonder. How long? A month. Um, 
it was quite a long time ago. Yeah. I'd say uh, maybe seven weeks. It was all tied up with all sorts of other stuff. Uh huh. So you're kind but of. But enough um, that I knew that I didn't need to eat. I was checking it out for myself. How much weight did you lose? Uh, a lot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and how, how much but, would you have lost if you'd done I, it for I lost, a year instead of seven weeks? I lost some weight, but yet I didn't look. Um, my, I think my body quite liked it. Hmm. Um, I, my whole body got a little softer. Yeah. And, um, yeah. But I was wondering whether or not, well, is this what I'm here for then, to be a breatharian or to be a... Mm. I didn't call it a breatharian because that, that term came after. I didn't yeah. know that there was such a group. Um, but I, um, thankfully I, I returned and was with my children and with them, you know, I would just eat by feel, mm -hmm. you know, but I wasn't eating very much, but then I started eating with them because mm -hmm. they still wanted to eat and weren't going through whatever. I support them to source yeah. what's right for them from themselves, right? Not what I'm doing. Yeah, I've done. I went through a whole phase of experimentation along those lines too. You know, fruit diets and fasting and, and all that stuff. And Great learning. Yeah, it was an interesting phase. I wouldn't want to live my life that way in general. Thankfully, right? too much fixation. I was thankful. On, on that I was thankful that I wasn't like you know one of those. <laughs> like, yeah. That wasn't going to be whatever it was my play here on earth is yeah. about. <laughs> Ultimately, I, I don't think it's a path to liberation. <laughs> Well, for some it might be. Might know? be. Like, that, but it can also a, become an obsession and, and a, a distraction and a another you know, rule, Another position. Right. Yes, yes. Yeah. Ah, okay. So I wanted to, to speak a little bit about uh, the science and non-duality mm -hmm. conference, conference. Right? In mm -hmm. um, relation to uh, my own... Um, it's not my own. So race that. <laughs> but when this whole uh, uh, consciousness realized its own self mm -hmm. here with, with myself, um, the first thing that occurred to me was, why doesn't everybody get together? Have a conference. Well, I didn't or see a conference. I just thought, saw, why doesn't everybody who's in the awakened state get together? Mm -hmm. Because the vibration, to me, it was so clear that the vibration would just change everything. Yeah. So I'm really, really happy about sand and uh, being involved in that this mm -hmm. year um, because it's important. It's yeah. important to uh, humanity to uh, be in such a high vibration happening. Occurrence. It is. And um, if, what she's referring to, in case you're not aware, is there's this conference in San Jose every year. Uh, around late October called the Science and Non-Duality Conference, which if you search on Google, you'll find it. And I've been going for years, and um, it's, it's getting better and better. Um, this year, I think that there's over a thousand people that have signed up for it so far, and all, I don't know, dozens and dozens of very interesting speakers, and it's um, just, for me anyway, it's just yeah. great fun. Yeah, and, and Rick is speaking there, and I'm speaking yeah, there too, we're both so speaking. we're both speaking. And, uh, and I'm going to do a whole, if you look on BatGap on the upcoming interviews page, you'll see a whole bunch of interviews and forum moderations and stuff that I'll be doing at the conference. Um, so, you know, I'll be putting that up on BatGap, but, you know, if, if anybody can make it to the conference, I always like to encourage them. Uh, yep. And the conference organizers like me to encourage them. <laughs> well, yes, yes. Uh, and that, that uh, but it's also an invitation to be in such a high Yeah, it's vibration. lovely to be in such a gathering. Uh, yeah, the vicinity to actually be there in person, it's quite strong. Mm -hmm. And then there's also the option to, um, it's going to be online. Uh, some of the live. things are, some of the main things will be streamed right. online. Yeah. yeah, some of the main things will be streamed. Yeah. Um, I thought quite a bit of it, I mean, because I'm, I'm not a big speaker. But are you going to be streamed? It, the information that got sent out huh. uh, seemed to say that I could let people know that... Uh, on 2.30 and oh. when I'm speaking well, on could the Friday. Be. I'm not totally sure. That, uh, that it could be streamed yeah. and, and to invite people. I know in the past you see like our presentations are going to be happening simultaneously with two or three or four other That's things right. in other rooms. Yeah. Right, and right. I, I wasn't entirely clear that they're going to be streaming all these things, but I don't, we'll see. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that. in any case, you can tape it. You can bring your own video camera if you want. If I, I think they'll, and, and then we'll see. We'll talk about that. Right, um, right. But I, I think that there is a, a 
option for people who can't make it is the point. To watch some of the to stuff watch online. some of the stuff online True. for a small donation, I think. Is yes, it. it's very reasonable. Yeah. Um, anyway, so there's ways, that. Ways to include yourself in that vibration, and even to tune in where you are, because you know, yeah. if neither of those are available, the um, you're not separate from what's happening, right. and uh, can choose to open to that from wherever you are. You know, uh, today's the 24th, isn't it? So yesterday was supposed to be this big kind of shift in world consciousness or something. Did you hear about that? Uh, uh, some X-ray, or I forget what it is. I, I listened to this whole thing on the internet. And a lot of these new age spiritual type people were talking about this big shift. It was getting almost as much hoopla as, as uh, you know, December 21st, 2012. Oh, really? Yeah. Ah. And um, uh, yeah, I, I'm I've been a little bit out of the loop here. <laughs> I'm, I'm even more better. out of the loop because <laughs> I would guess I was over and giving satsang and a weekend. Uh, yeah. Last weekend, I, I've heard more about. The so red as far as we know, like 25 percent of the people on the planet haven't ascended or anything. And you and I haven't. We're still here. Yeah. So I'm just wondering if you have. But I'm being a little facetious here. But um, you know, do you have any kind of, as a sensitive, intuitive, perceptive person? Do you have any sort of insights or or feelings about stuff that's happening, you know, in the world of a of that nature, that you know, sh big shifts taking place. How we might expect to see these things uh, unfold, or not. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, sometimes I see things and I sense mm -hmm. things, but they're not firm enough to write down and say, oh, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, that's good because then you won't be made a fool of when it, they don't happen. Like well, a lot of these people predict things on certain yeah. dates and then nothing happens. My interest is in the human being. Right. And in the human being, him or herself, mm -hmm. as much as they can, um, and an opening to that. And so I, I, I guess I just don't really look in those directions. I yeah. mean, Yes, the psychic abilities have been open for a long time, and mm -hmm. I saw that, that that could be a way to escape uh, living life in some regular way. What well, could be? It, it can be something that a lot of people get caught up in that. Oh, and, predicting and, future things that are well, going to save them. And the whatnot. cosmos are pretty darn entertaining. Yeah. I mean, it's understandable that people would get totally caught up in that, perhaps, but that isn't what... Right. Well, even like, you know, Jesus is coming back and we're all going to be saved and therefore we don't have to worry about the environment because um, we're all going to be out of here anyway, so let's just pump all the oil we can. I mean, that, that's actually some, what some people... Right. Well, I think Deepak in the, in the sand... Uh, for at, sure. Um, huh? In one of the videos, he's uh -huh. saying, you know, perhaps this is it. That He says it a different way, but he's talking about the end. <laughs> huh. That uh, maybe this whole human experience is, is just going to end. It could. And um, because we're so out of balance. It could. He's, he's suggesting that it's, yeah. you know, unless we do bring in some more harmony and, and uh, it seems to want to, from my perspective, it seems to want to be everywhere. Everywhere I look, I see harmony attempting to find itself. Mm. And um, all of it appears to me to be that. And so I, I, I like to point to it. Um, but so that doesn't go anywhere else though from here. Yeah. So that if, as far as future predict predictions, um, it's speculative. Well, um, and of course, if it's occurring to me, this whole balancing of the masculine and feminine as a potentiality, um, that that both aspects of self might be more heard in some sort of balance, um, it's occurring everywhere. Yeah. So. I imagine that, and, it, and we see that quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Not a lot yet, but <laughs> quite a bit more um, than it's ever been before. Mm. Yep, things are definitely happening. I mean, there's a quickening going on, and, yeah. uh, and I think it's a little bit um, of a gamble to predict specific flashy things on specific dates and all that, that they never seem to pan out, but uh, the fact that such things don't pan out shouldn't discourage people from thinking that actually things are changing, you know, in, in, right. in, in a, an inspiring way. Right. Well, if that instills some sort of 
willingness to participate in their lives. Yeah. For sure, right? Because really the participation of being with themselves more and more deeply is... Mm -hmm. Well, if you don't have that perspective, the, then it can, you know, and, and you just look at the world in terms of what the news reports, it can be rather depressing. No, totally. Yeah. yeah. No, it's like, yeah. you know, we're going to hell in a handbasket, but... Well, there's a lot more people committing suicide because it doesn't look like there's a very rosy... Yeah. You know, if they're or refusing unhappy. to have children or, you know, just sort of having a bleak view of the future. Yeah. But um, if you kind of can see that there's something subtler going on that's not getting reported on the news and it's just as real, if not more so, and, and uh, you know, it's, that's the real news. And it mm -hmm. can be very inspiring, give you a whole different perspective on the world. Mm -hmm. Well, certainly. I mean, yeah. for myself, looking at it energetically from the felt sense, and everybody feels energy. Mm -hmm. Everybody feels heat from the sun. That's just energy. They feel cold from ice. Mm -hmm. They can feel and hear the sensation of a train going by. They can feel the rumbling. I'm not talking about anything more than that. Right. And that's energy. The energetics are of what is here. That's what's calling for harmony right where they are. Mm. So that's probably why I don't look so much into what's going to happen next because I'm much more... <laughs> Interested in supporting yeah, people to take be care right, of this, and that'll be right taken here. Care of. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, yeah, be with this, and tend to it. Yes. Mm. This that's here. So you wrote a book. I did. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And right here, right now, meditations, satsang invitations for expanding awareness, volume one. How many volumes are there going to be? I don't know. At least two. Good. You know, I don't. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's a book about supporting people to be more of the human aspect that they are and to use uh, whatever's happening as a way to um, come into the moment. I mean, as you, you've, you've read it because you've mm -hmm. written a blurb for it, what would you say about it just offhand? Um, well, here's what I said in my blurb. I said, Canella's invitations encapsulate deep spiritual insight and wisdom gleaned from her own life experience in a way that enables the reader to actually shift their perspective and begin living a more fulfilled life right here, right now, which is the title of the book. Um, so that was my reaction from, to it as, yeah. I, as I read yeah. it. Yeah. And so it's, it's available on uh, Amazon just, mm -hmm. just this week. Oh, like it's okay. like totally freshly here. I'll link to it from your page on BatGap also. Oh, link okay. to the Amazon yeah. page where you can get it. Okay, thank you all. Yeah. I'll uh, give you that. It's not, uh, it's and it's expanding in its availability. It's in the UK, but it's not in Canada yet. Mm. But it ought to be there within the next couple of weeks. Um, also, I've um, recorded a toning CD just this past mm. week, and it will likely be available on my website. Um, Somebody was just telling me about toning. They, apparently, there's a lot of people doing it in Fairfield, where I live, and I hadn't really known about it. And uh, you want to, since you mentioned it, you might as well tell us a little bit for a moment what it is. Uh, well, it started occurring naturally in Reiki sessions yeah. when I was giving Reiki sessions to people. You would emit a tone? What I'd be there voice? and following whatever was wanting to happen. Mm -hmm. And then in my body, I would feel like some sort of sound wanted to come out. Mm -hmm. And so then I would let the person know... This is sound. strange, <laughs> but <laughs> it seems like there's a sound that wants to come out. Yeah. And so then these sounds started coming out, different mm -hmm. ones. And uh, sometimes I would go on a place on the person's body and then tone into their body. Mm -hmm. And so when I started offering satsang, um, it occurred to me, would this be supportive to a group? Uh -huh. uh, because Paul O had done it at the end of his groups. Uh -huh. Um, and then I always had found that for myself, when he did that toning, that I wished I could just sit still in the group rather than that it was the end and everybody was getting up and shifting around and whatnot. So that's why hmm. um, I started offering it in satsang. And uh, people have given the feedback that it's very supportive hmm. to bring them into experiencing themselves rather than listening I mean, listening to the mind isn't a bad thing. It's just when it's predominant. Yeah. So you created a CD of this toning. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You might want to, like, um, put a sample of it on your website that people could download to hear what it's like, you know, yeah. as a kind of a taste of what the CD would be like. 
Well, there's there is in the um, satsang recordings that are on YouTube. I see. There's some. some of that. Yeah, like in the okay. a particularly good one is the London uh, satsang recording, the part one. Okay. The first part is more speaking, and then there's some toning in that. And you have a link to that on your website. Yes. Good. Okay. Um, so, I know that you spend part of your year in Mexico, in in the winter, right? Yes. Despite the the automatic weapons and the carjackings and whatnot, you still go back there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was in a different area different than where I live. It was. Yeah. It's known as a bit rougher, and maybe. Yeah. You know, who knows? It, and it it was actually a very good experience to go through uh, to witness how how you'd react to that well not only myself but also how other people live you know mm. that, that these uh, police officers are dealing with stuff like that you know it's one thing to know it from the television I mean it's, it's fairly mm -hmm. obvious but it's another thing to be brought into their world yeah uh, where you know they're in total police gear with carrying these semi-automatic rifles um, with bulletproof vests on and I'm sitting there <laughs> yeah <laughs> right um, to live as with that kind of threat uh, yeah uh, in those areas especially being a police officer well that's not going to inspire me to go to Mexico but you go to a different place in Mexico yes yes no where we are it's, it's <laughs> not like that and and that was also a number of years ago when there was more yeah um, well there's a lot of different stuff still happening that it was looking for harmony in Mexico. Right. But, but you're thinking area, of offering great. a retreat down there? When uh, yes, yes. Yeah. I'd love to offer like a, a week retreat mm -hmm. in supporting people. I, I, I did come around to calling myself a teacher after all. Mm -hmm. um, and what I teach people is how to listen to themselves mm. more deeply um, and more precisely. Yeah. Using their own words. Uh, in what they are saying about what they're experiencing mm -hmm. uh, to access themselves inside. Yeah, and and I believe you also go over to Czechoslovakia or the Czech Republic. Uh, the Czech Republic, I go to Prague and uh, London. Uh -huh. um, and Like every year or something. Yeah, I'm going to be in Milton, Washington uh -huh. uh, a week and a half from now. Okay. That's close to Tacoma, Seattle. Yeah, and people may be watching this two years from now, and so all these true, events true, will true. have transpired. But right. but um, basically, you give retreats in various places, and yeah. would probably be open to giving them in other places. So people could contact you if they wanted to attend one or organize one or whatever by going to your website and clicking on the contact button. Absolutely, right? that'd be wonderful. Yeah. I I do go where I'm invited. Yeah. So and um, and I would also recommend with Canella or any anybody I interview if you feel a resonance with her or with anybody interview and um, you know you want to sort of stay in touch with them sign up for their email newsletter on thing the, on most people have that where you can yeah. sign up to be notified of this and that because otherwise yeah. you know months will go by and you'll forget and you know you might miss out on something that would actually be good for you I send out actually what what's in this book these are sat sign invitations it's a collection of them you send them out as like I send out new ones. installments like I send out new ones yes yeah. supportive um, one or two page uh, invitations on like all probably the next one's going to be on responsibility mm -hmm. so um, I'll sp just write some sp you know ways that people can look at that right. in support of themselves um, and then the newsletter follows that mm -hmm. uh, satsang invitation good so people good. can find out what I'm up to or what's been happening anything else on here Ah, just that there's going to be a interview of Rick Archer oh, yeah. um, by Non-Duality Vancouver. To uh, watch for that in the coming next while, you're going to be... Yeah, it's funny. Um, you know, it's, I don't have a lot of time to grant interviews because I'm doing interviews and then doing my day job and a lot of other things. But uh, I was, I'm having traveled up here and... You know, both up and back, I have three different flights and a bunch of airport layovers. So I have my iPad with me, and this fellow who runs, Kevin Diakow is his name? Diakow. Diakow, yeah. who runs Non-Duality Vancouver, wanted to interview me. So I said, all right, well, I'm going to be in the Seattle airport for a couple of hours. Let's do it then. So we're going to record that on Tuesday, I believe, and he'll put it up on. If you search Facebook for Non-Duality Vancouver, you'll see it for what it's worth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it would be good to hear yeah. your your journey. 
Yeah, I've done that a few times. I mean, if anyone's interested in that, they, if you go to BatGap, there's a page that lists all everybody who's been interviewed alphabetically, and I'm on there too because several people have interviewed me. Yeah. Um, all righty. So, any final thoughts? Have we covered it all? Um, Solved all the problems of the world? <laughs> <laughs> Invited a harmony, yeah. <laughs> a possibility to be more harmoniously with yourself mm -hmm. and therefore the world. Mm. Um, so yeah, no, I feel like that might be a nice note. What do you, do you have anything more? Not really, <laughs> just to emphasize what you just said, which is that, um, who was it? Somebody or other, I forget, Dalai Lama or somebody or other said, you know, it's easier to wear shoes than to cover the earth with leather. Um, and, uh, you know, we all want to see the world change and all, but um, it begins here, you know. And, and here, and here, right. and here. And yes. so the orientation, the emphasis should always and be ends. to, right, yes. to, to really... Um, How is this affecting yourself. Yeah. Because you're the representation of consciousness right. living its life like this. And what can someone who is full of stuff, you know, yeah. do for the world? However sincerely intentioned they may be, they're going to have a, a muddled influence. Right. So um, in which is not to say that, you know, great people who still had issues didn't do great things. Martin Luther mm -hmm. King and all kinds of other people have made huge contributions. But, uh, you know, we, all, we can't all be a Gandhi or Martin Luther King, but what we can do is, uh, you know, really bring about profound transformation within ourselves. Right, well, and you're, the you're your will be inevitable. own Martin Luther King, but you're not called that because they already did that, right? right. So there's this, this one, and I mean, that's the one other thing, I guess, mm -hmm. is just because it's kind of come up like this, is that, that movie, The Matrix, right? Uh -huh. And there's the one. Right. And the, the, Everybody has that because you are consciousness. And, and it's daring to be with the one that you are, as if, if you, you are a savior of the world. Hmm. Right? It's the Holy Grail. No man is an island entire of himself. You know? Well, that's, clean up that's not this for planet. Whom the bell tolls, it clean tolls up this for thee. planet. Right. Yeah. It's, 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 it cleans up our planet right. together. We each clean up our planet of who we are in, in the magnetic. Uh, planet that we mm -hmm. show up to be, same as the moon. Here's a uh, yeah. this yeah. aspect of consciousness. Another analogy: If you want a forest to be green, every tree has to be green. So, you know, make sure that you're a green tree before worrying about too much about the forest. Right. <laughs> yeah. Or what did Christ say? You know, remove the the log from your own eye before worrying about the speck in your in your in the other guy's eye. Right. Well, that speck is going to point to the log. Yeah. 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 yeah that's and that's 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 what's happening. Uh -huh. Literally, that is life. Yeah. Great. Alrighty. So um, I've been speaking with Canella Michelle Myers, and as most of you listening will know, this is an ongoing series of interviews. Um, I'll be doing several more this weekend, uh, and there are already several hundred um, which have been done. And they're all archived and categorized on batgap.com. Go there, and the menus are pretty self-explanatory. Past interviews, future interviews, donate button, um, email sign up, podcast, all that stuff. So you all know how to do it. So um, thanks for listening and watching. There'll be a page for Canella about this interview, links to everything about that you want to know about Canella, her website, her book. And uh, we'll see you for the next one. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah.